and welcome to Insight of Thermology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another advanced lecture. Today we are studying polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy and specially the OCT findings in the PCV that is polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy. So what is this PCV? PCV is nothing but it was actually considered to be a variant of type 1 CNVM. That means the type of CNVM which is present below the RPE and it occurs more commonly in African American or Asian individuals. So this is very important. So initially we were considering that the PCV is actually a variant of AMD. However, with the newer classification and new research, it is now being considered a part of the pachychoroid spectrum. So the PCV lesions might actually look like orange-red subretinal nodules and they are going to present with a spontaneous subretinal hemorrhage. Along with that, sometimes a serous or a hemorrhagic pigment epithelial detachment will also be present. So when do you have to suspect PCV in cases of AMD? So whenever you are seeing a reddish-orange subretinal nodule, and you see serosanguinous maculopathy, disproportionate amount of exudation compared to the size of lesion. That means you see a reddish orange lesion which is too small and compared to the size of the lesion, the amount of exudation that you see is quite huge. And that exudation can lead to hemorrhagic pigment epithelial detachment and sometimes these patients can present with submacular hemorrhage spontaneously and non-responsiveness to anti-VEGF therapy. So this is very important. If the lesions, if the patient is being treated as AMD and he's not responding to your VEGF therapy every month which is being given, then you have to suspect that maybe the patient has polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy. So what is this PCV? Polypoidal as the name suggests. The PCV lesions are characterized by polyp shaped vascular complexes located beneath the RPE. So we know that we have the retinal pigment epithelium and uh, below that we have the Brux membrane. So certain abnormal vessels will grow as a network below uh, the RPE and this is called the branching vascular networks. Okay. So these branching vascular network will in turn lead to formation of polyp shape uh, detachment of the retinal pigment epithelium and therefore it is called polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy. Apart from the polyp shape, these branching vascular complexes themselves can take a shape of a polyp and they can be present below this RPE detachment like this and that is the reason it is called polyp shaped vascular complexes or polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy. So what are the important findings that you see in PCV? PCV usually will present on OCT, you will have a large pigment epithelial detachment and usually adjacent to that large pigment epithelial detachment, there will be a smaller or a flatter pigment epithelial detachment. And this flatter pigment epithelial detachment will usually have a hyperreflected hyper reflected material or tissue present in it and usually that tissue is nothing but it is your branching vascular network so it is considered that that this smaller pigment epithelial attachment which is housing the branching vascular network is the one that is supplying the polyps present in that tall pigment epithelial detachment Apart from that, sometimes uh, on the posterior surface of this pigment epithelial detachment, you will see certain round oval uh, polyps like this on the posterior surface of the associated pigment epithelial detachment. Now, these are going to cause exudation as I told you and these exudates will be seen in the retina as hyper reflected dots. Sometimes subretinally, that means in between this RPE and the retina, there will be a material, subretinal material might also be observed. So let us uh, look at this with examples. So in this OCT picture, just have a look. You can see here there's a big epithelial, there's a big retinal pigment epithelial detachment moreover. Okay. And you can see here the uh, RP is not seen. So probably this is a sanguinous, this is a, see, uh, see, a sanguinous pigment epithelial detachment. And adjacent to that, you can see a shallow pigment epithelial detachment. So usually it is considered that the branching vascular networks will be present within this shallow pigment epithelial detachment. Attachment. And these branching vascular networks will be providing or feeding the tall pigment epithelial detachment which will have the polyps. Now because here you have blood within that pigment epithelial detachment, we are not able to see the polyps in that tall P uh, PED. 
similarly in this picture you can see this is a raster scan that has been taken a line scan here and <clears throat> not a raster sorry this is a line scan and you can see at this level you can see there's a large pigment epithelial detachment and then over here actually not just uh, you have this here a small pigment epithelial detachment but here as you can see this hyper reflected material this is the sub retinal hyper reflected material and this pd is also uh, uh, air leaking and there is this intraretinal fluid also located in this area now another sign that you see in uh, polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy is the notch sign so the polyp lesions are usually found in the perimacular area or close to the serosanguinous pd so you have one pigment epithelial detachment bigger one and adjacent to that you will have the polypoidal lesions usually there will be a notch between these two lesions as seen over here okay so this is a notch so presence of this notch can sometimes indicate that yes there might be a pigment uh, polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy and this is called a notch sign now as i told you sometimes within those pigment epithelial detachment you are going to see certain round oval cavity like lesions as you can see here so what are these round oval cavities with hyper reflected borders these are nothing but these are your polypoidal lesions now sometimes a, a double layer sign okay a double layer sign is also associated with polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy however this is not very specific and can be seen in other disorders which have the pachychoroid spectrum okay so all these disorders will come actually uh, will have the double layer sign so it's not very specific to the polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy so double layer sign is nothing but the rpe and the brux membrane they will get separated by certain hyper reflected material within them and this is seen on the spectral luminosity as two hyper reflected layers and therefore this is called the double layer sign so you can see this is a picture of a choroidal vasculopathy okay which is a type of uh, uh, disorder under the pachychoroid spectrum you can see this double layer sign so this is the one layer and this is the other layer so nothing but the rp and the brux membrane and you have moderate hyper reflected vitty in the space between them so this is called double layer sign similarly here you can see this is a notch sign there are two pds okay and you can see again here this is one rpe and then there's a brux membrane and this is called the double layer sign but however this is actually you can see a lot of a lot of amount of subretinal fluids and this is a serous subretinal fluid and this is actually causing the neurosensory retina getting detached from the rpe so this is nothing but this is actually a chronic central serous chorioretinopathy case uh, which is also a part of the pachychoroid spectrum so now the question is what is the role of indocyanin green uh, in the pcv now indocyanin green usually is used in all the complicated cases okay very challenging cases or atypical cases okay where multimodal imaging might be helpful in differential diagnosis so what happens is that in the indocyanin green we have a larger wavelength of light that is used about 800 nanometers compared to the fundus floris and angiography we use about 490 so this longer wavelength will pass to the pigment epithelium very easily and better highlight the choroidal vascular details so you can see the dilated choroidal vascular lesions and the saltations are going to appear as very distinct nodular polyp lesions specifically seen in the first six minutes of the icg in this picture you can see that this is the indocyanin green picture you can see here the the branching vascular networks emerging and you can see certain hyper reflected areas here in the first six minutes and this indicates that this is a polypoidal uh, choroidal vasculopathy